situation been further complicated by the killing of the Iranian nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh? It certainly is under pressure. I mean, what Biden has to his advantage is, is two things at this moment. One is that it wasn't his administration, so um, he can certainly, you know, say very uh, confidently and, and uh, plausibly this is not something that he approved of, not something that he would have done. I think a lot of people see that if, if there was an American hand in it, it, it came from the outgoing Trump administration sort of striking back. And, of course, even on that count, uh, there's plausible deniability about what role, if any, America played. Um, there doesn't seem to be much doubt that Israel played a role, but whether America supported and how uh, is uncertain. And that works to Biden's advantage. So he can certainly say, I didn't know, I wasn't part of this, I didn't approve of it, it's not the way we're going to be doing things henceforth. Thank you, Brett Barton, Professor of Global Islamic Politics at Deakin University in Australia. Coming up, Donald Trump meets with House Republicans discussing overturning election results. This is World Today. We'll be back. Hey there. Join us at a New Year digital concert and meet China's most elite instrumentalists. <laughs> 随便一波 Watch us live on December 31st, 10 a.m. Beijing time. you find us on China Plus official Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Weibo accounts. You can also find a special podcast version on all major podcast platforms. Just search Music Talks. Let's celebrate the new year with Chinese music together. <laughs> Ever worried that you'll miss out on breaking events? Tune in to today to get the latest news and analysis on the important stories in China and around the globe. Today, illuminating the news that matters to you. Welcome back. You're listening to World Today. I'm Zhao Ying. Donald Trump has less than a month left as President of the United States. He lost the election to Joe Biden in November and has not conceded yet. Yet, Trump and his most loyal supporters say he was cheated, and they are not giving up the fight for a second term. Some of those supporters are Republican members of Congress, and have discussed with Trump how to overturn the election results. Joining us now in the studio is our Patrick Flannery. Thanks for joining us, Patrick. Thanks, Charlie. Why are the president and many of his supporters continuing to fight the results of the election, despite no evidence of widespread voter fraud? Uh, President Trump has been fighting uh, the election results uh, since earlier this year when he planted the seeds that this was going to be a rigged election. And, you know, long before he was president, years ago, Donald Trump demeaned people he didn't like by calling them losers. That was always his buzz phrase. He has thrown that word around for years. So for him, losing an election is inconceivable. It's unacceptable. So. He's done everything he can uh, since November to, to try to flip this. He's sued several states. He's failed. He's petitioned the Supreme Court and failed. And there were dozens of lawsuits aimed at overturning Biden's victory in the battleground states that he didn't win. And not one lawsuit stuck. So Trump's latest attempt to reverse the outcome of this election uh, is this reported three-hour meeting he had with a bunch of congressional Republicans this week. Congressman of Alabama, Mo Brooks, uh, is leading that effort. And this group is also meeting with Vice President Mike Pence. And why is that important? Well, Mike Pence is presiding over the session of Congress to take place on January 6th, when the Electoral College votes are supposed to officially be certified. Usually these steps are a formality. We don't even typically report them. This is an election like no other. Nothing's ever been contested to this degree. So now... Uh, there, there's a big worry that this would involve you know, certain Republicans objecting to the electors in the states that Trump lost. So this is how desperate things have become going in the final days of, of Donald Trump's administration. Uh, he has shown no sign that he will accept defeat or even meet with Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Well, as you laid out, the pro-Trump movement is being pushed not by ordinary citizens, 
by, by certain elected officials. How is this campaign inspiring voters to challenge the reality that Trump lost the election? Well, one of the more extreme efforts is a citizen-driven campaign on Facebook to host what they call a virtual second inauguration ceremony for Donald Trump. And so it sounds exactly uh, how you're probably picturing it. 